Hi, my name's Joe, and this is a spoiler-filled follow-up to my video on Cowboy Bebop. If you haven't watched that original video, or Bebop itself, rectify both of those before proceeding. Cowboy Bebop achieves a lot with a little. Whilst it boasts 26 episodes in its one and only season, only a fraction of that is committed to an overarching plot. Indeed, 21 episodes are Bounty of the Week affairs, leaving only a handful of chapters to further the heartbreaking backstory of Spike Spiegel, his doomed love affair with Julia, and his deadly relationship with Vicious. Cowboy Bebop is never something I've wished for more of. That's thanks in part to the existing material feeling satisfyingly full-bodied and varied. I would worry about waning quality, or even necessity, were it ever to be continued. There truly can be too much of a good thing, and there are too few perfect runs of media in the world to risk one of them by asking for more. But the biggest reason that a follow-up to Cowboy Bebop wouldn't make sense is, of course, the death of Spike Spiegel. In its final episode, Spike loses Julia in a rooftop gunfight to no-name thugs and kills his blood brother Vicious to avenge her. As he descends from that deadly duel, in front of a troop of armed guards, he falls to the ground and finally succumbs to his wounds. With a final, long, melancholy pan to the stars, as the achingly sad Blue plays the show off one last time, this ending never left much doubt in my mind about the events that had transpired in Bebop's final moments. But a community grew around Bebop's ambiguous curtain call, an ambiguity director Shinichiro Watanabe loves to tease. Just sleeping. <laughs> He's spoken in interviews time and time again, saying that the ending is up for interpretation, and these thoughts are only my own. The theory that Spike survives his injuries certainly has merit. Spike has endured far worse in the show's run and walked away from it, albeit in a full body cast at times. But to downplay Bebop's final moments is to rob them of their weight, a weight the show promises you'll carry in its final title card. But for my money, at least from a writing perspective, Spike simply has to die in the real folk blues. Throughout those five load-bearing episodes, sprinkled seemingly at random throughout Bebop's run, Spike is preparing for the end. Through his prophetic, dense interactions with Laughing Bull, Spike is told not to fear death, to instead let it guide him gently into infinity. He speaks of a star for each of us in the sky, a star that, upon our death, fades from that great tapestry. But more so than any of that, Spike simply has to die. Over the course of the season, Spike is obsessed with both Vicious and Julia. They're a powerful trifecta whose fate seems inextricably bound to one another. Spike is helpless against the siren call of either of them. And when Spike loses Julia and flies in the face of logic and self-preservation to avenge her by killing Vicious, they're all fulfilling their roles, not just in their strange triumvirate, but in the show at large, with Julia and Vicious dead, there's no reason for Spike to exist anymore. Whilst Spike canonically succumbs to his injuries, there's no doubt in my mind that those wounds are simply a means to a literal end. Spike didn't die because he was injured, not really. Indeed, he took far worse licks at the hands of Poirot Le Fou and countless others. No, instead, Spike expires because his journey is over. It's reached its natural conclusion. His story is complete and as Spike lies motionless, as we take that one last long, lingering trip up to the heavens, a bright star gently fades from view. See you, Space Cowboy. Break down the door.